In this lesson, we're going to work with some algebraic expressions. We're going to multiply them, expand them, write them, manipulate them, and just see how different things change and how we can write different expressions to represent different scenarios. So let's just practice with simplifying an expression. Say you're given the expression 2 times the quantity 5x plus 8. Now first let's interpret this. What does this expression mean? Well, the 2 outside is a coefficient, and it means you have to multiply 2 by the quantity 5x plus 8. The factors here are 2 and 5x plus 8. So this is almost like, think about it as 2 times y, where y equals this 5x plus 8 bit, right? So you would say in this expression that the two factors are 2 and y. The only difference here is that you have a quantity. The next thing you want to do is expand this using the distributive property. So you multiply 2 by each of the terms inside. When you do that, you get 10x plus 16. Now we're going to work with a word problem, and we'll translate words into an algebraic expression. Nicole and her friends are going bowling on Friday night. They're sharing a bowling lane, and we'll play two games. The bowling alley charges X dollars per game and S dollars to rent a pair of shoes. There are P friends and everyone will rent a pair of shoes. They will split the total cost evenly. So what we're going to do is we are going to write an expression that represents the cost that each person will have to pay when they go bowling. So to do this, let's go into the word problem and find the pieces of information that we need. We need to know that it's X dollars per game. We also need to know that they will play two games. So how would we represent this? Well, if it's X for one game, two games would be X plus X, which equals 2X, right? So I'm going to just tuck that away. We're going to come back to this. So we know that 2X equals the cost for two games because X represents the number of dollars per game. Now, what else do we need to know? We need to know that now we also need to know that the bowling alley charges S dollars to rent a pair of shoes and each person needs a pair of shoes. Well, how many people are there? So what would the cost for everyone's shoes be? There are P friends and each pair of shoes costs S dollars. So how can we represent that? Well, there are, this is going to be the cost, right? 2X is the cost of the games plus the cost for the shoes for everyone, right? So S dollars per pair, and everyone needs a pair, so we'll multiply by the number of people that there are. 2X plus SP now represents the total cost for Nicole and her friends going out playing bowling. Now, if we want to find how much money each person will spend, we know that it says they will split the total cost evenly. So that means we divide the total cost by the number of people. And this is the expression that represents the total number of dollars or total amount of money that each person will have to pay for everyone to go out bowling on Friday night. Let's try another problem. In this problem, I want to explore what happens when you change one variable and how changing one variable impacts another variable. So we're going to do this by taking the example of the formula for finding the volume of a cylinder. And in this case, for a cylinder, volume or V equals pi r squared h. Now let's just pick some values for r and h. Let's just say that r equals 2 and h equals 5. So now we plug in the numbers, right? So we know pi r squared h is volume. So we can begin substituting. If r is 2, this would be pi times 2 squared times the height, which is 5. 2 squared is 4, and now times 5. So pi times 4 times 5. So volume equals pi times 20, or you can write this as 20 pi. Now what happens if the radius is doubled? Let's see. So the radius is 2. What if it were doubled to 4? So now we would have v equals pi times 4 squared times 5. 4 squared is 16. And 16 times 5 is 80, so here we would have pi times 80, or 80 pi. So now let's compare these two. We've got 20 pi, and down here, oops, I wrote over my pi sign. Um, we've got 
20 pi and 80 pi. And we want to compare these. If you multiply 20 pi times 4, you'll get 80 pi, which means when you double the radius, the volume of the cylinder quadruples. And another way that you can express that is you can say the volume would increase by a factor of 4 because it's 4 times greater. Now let's see what happens if we double the height. So let's do this one in black. What if we made the height 10? So let's scroll down a little bit. And we can still see the volumes. So now if we make the height 10, we're going to have volume equals pi r squared h, right? That's the formula. And we're going to use that first radius that we had, which was 2. So volume equals pi times 2 squared, and we're dealing with a height now that is doubled, so the height is 10. So volume equals pi times 4 times 10, and this gives us pi times 40, or 40 pi. Okay, so now we've got 40 pi in the mix. We had 20 pi was the original volume. 80 pi is what we got when we multiplied the radius by 2, or doubled the radius, and now 40 pi is what we get when we double the height only. So now compare 20 and 40. 40 pi is a factor of 2 greater than 20 pi. It's double 20 pi. So when you double the height of a cylinder, the volume doubles. So just to recap, when you're working with multiple variables and you want to find out how one might affect the other, follow these steps. The first step, plug in values for each variable into the original formula given. In this case, it was volume. Next, you want to manipulate one of the variables and calculate a new answer. So remember, we decided to double the radius first, then we saw how the volume was affected. Lastly, you want to compare the new answer, which in our case was the new volume, to the original answer, or the original volume. In this lesson, you've learned how to play with and manipulate algebraic expressions. Thanks for watching.